Okay, so thank you for joining us today. Adam Dello from Thermokinetics. I'm happy to introduce you to Matt Wiseman from uh, Honeywell. Perfect. Thank you so much, Adam. Um, so thank you all for joining the call today. Um, my name is Matt Wiseman, as Adam mentioned. I'm here from Honeywell Industrial Cybersecurity. I'm the Global Product Marketing Leader for SMX, or Secure Media Exchange. Uh, and this is our solution uh, that we've designed here in-house to help secure um, and enable the safe use of removable media, that being external hard drives, um, you know, USB storage media, and any type of USB device. Um, so with that, uh, I'll jump right into some headlines. Um, I'm sure you've all seen more and more in the news, um, you know, some of these scary things that we'll see with $13 million in damages for an average cyber crime or $52 million, and some of these really shocking and large numbers. Um, but what I would like to say safe connection to site if we're working remote. Um, we have a better view of some data and uh, we're able to manage uh, you know, across our site from a remote location or to get some, some visibility to areas we didn't have such as uh, USB use. So there really are a lot of benefits and with that we can see some competitive advantages. Um, looking across at some of your competitors, uh, the more data you have, the more nimble and uh, smart your movements can be in the market. So it's something to keep in mind opposed to, you know, just the scary lines and the negative things we see. There's actually a lot of positives that come with uh, improving your cybersecurity program. So I just want to do a really quick overview um, of who we are here at Honeywell, our partnership with Thermokinetics, and what we can help you with. Um, so I'm sure some of you are familiar with the Honeywell name, whether that be from fans and thermostats uh, to our DCS systems and some of our industrial control. Um, but I'm here from the cybersecurity team. Uh, so what we do here at Honeywell Industrial Cybersecurity is we think of ourselves as the OT experts uh, when it comes to the world of cyber. Uh, with that, we have a number of different IT partnerships and we can help in that area as well. Um, but everything from USB device security that I'm here to talk to uh, you about today to some of our partners to help with whitelisting, antivirus, uh, firewalls, different assessment programs if you are short staffed, um, or want to bring in some, some third party expertise, we can help you with that as well as some managed service offerings. So any questions about some of these different groups, uh, feel free to reach out to Adam and uh, we can start a conversation there. Um, so again, many of, many of you will know us from our DCS business, the OT products, um, that we make, Experion, different controllers. Um, and that's really where this group was born. So we started, uh, about 15, almost 20 years ago now, um, in that area looking to secure some of these OT technologies and we realized that all that we're doing for our, our own business we can do for others as well. Um, so we have over 300 employees around the world, a true follow the sun model. Uh, we've helped with over 5,000 projects um, and we have over a thousand secure remote access installs around the world. Um, we're totally vendor neutral even though we are here um, from Honeywell today with Thermokinetics. We can help with uh, any different offerings you may have uh, providing expertise or uh, or services. So uh, any questions, please feel free to reach out to Adam and we can move forward with that. Um, so now I, I always like to begin by going over who we are and what we do and then talking about uh, really the, the depth of the offering we have here. Um, being a fairly large company, we do have some benefits of you know having a global presence. And with that um, in cybersecurity, they, they really need to go hand in hand. Um, cybersecurity threats don't sleep and really we don't either. Um, so we have a follow the sun model of different service centers and labs around the world, constantly looking and hunting for the newest threats and impacts that could uh, 
you know, potentially have some some harmful consequences to ourselves or you know, any of our customers. So we're always on the lookout for any zero day threats. Um, we're always working in our different managed service centers, development centers and innovation centers around the world um, to provide the latest in threat research um, to you know, load that into all of our products and our different offerings um, to ensure that we're always on top of the, uh, the latest news. Uh, with this comes some industry leading research. Um, we really at the forefront of industrial USB research. Um, going back about a year now, we published the Honeywell Industrial uh, Cybersecurity USB Threat Report. And with that, I pulled some of the numbers here to share with you today. Um, so we partnered with 50 uh, live production sites around the globe across a number of different industries. So we wanted to have a global view of not you know, what we build in a lab or a test, um, but to find out really what our customers are dealing with and what is coming into these different sites whether that be oil and gas, energy, pulp and paper, uh, chemical, you know, the, the, the list goes on. Um, but really a, a wide reaching uh, study across not only the globe, but a number of different industries as well. Uh, with that, some of the numbers that I found personally to be rather uh, surprising, 44% of these sites that we partnered with, we did block some type of suspicious file. Um, of the files that we blocked, 26% had to cause huge impact. Um, to industrial control systems, that being loss of view, loss of control, among other things. Um, so this really, you know, you can see the fact that nearly half of these sites caught something and just over a quarter, it could have caused you know, some serious damage to their uh, to their sites. So I'm sure some of you are familiar with uh, the threats down below, Mirai, Stuxnet, Triton and WannaCry. Um, but those those really stood out to me. Um, just one quick note. I'm not sure how familiar you all are with Triton, um, but this was a threat that really became uh, prevalent last year, and it actually is designed to attack safety systems. Um, so the fact that we were able to catch that um, in the wild at, uh, at a production site and prevent that from getting in and potentially shutting down a safety system was really uh, a, a great success to us and uh, very positive for all, all the customers we were able to help with that uh, that situation. So. I always like to tell the story of a wolf in sheep's clothing, right? Something that can blend in, um, you know, appears to be safe or fine, uh, but there's really some serious uh, threat there and some damage that can be done. So I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the term bad USB. Um, devices that we trust and, you know, they do allow us to work as efficiently as possible and moving files, patches, um, or different information around a site, they can really cause some serious damage. So even though it looks safe and like a simple uh, USB, there's actually some advanced firmware-based attacks now um, where a device you know, in the palm of your hand can look like that USB that you trust and use, and you know, whether you have family photos on there or movies you downloaded, whatever it may be. Um, sometimes they actually aren't that simple USB key that we've trusted and used forever. Um, they actually function and perform as a keyboard. So to your eye, it looks safe, and then when you plug it in, it's interacting with the operating system as though it's a keyboard. Um, so I'll dive into this a little bit further, um, but this is a lot of the research that we're doing um, for our own production sites around the world and to help uh, our, our customers as well. So I'll go through what are the three most common uh, USB threats. I always like to talk about the rubber ducky. Uh, so this is a keystroke injection tool. It is, uh, you know, readily available. You can purchase them online for as little as, uh, you know, 40 or $50. And it really can be quite, uh, quite impactful in an industrial control environment. Uh, the PC or DCS, uh, engineering workstation, it, it will recognize this USB device as a keyboard, which, you know, typically is, is non-harmful and we need that to go through our, our day to day, day to day work. Um, but upon mounting and being inserted to the PC, um, it will automatically execute any pre-programmed scripts that are loaded into the device at a thousand words per minute. Um, so anything that someone could do, uh, you know, intending to cause harm or, you know, accidentally picking this up and plugging it in, uh, it'll happen. And we can't stop it with uh, typical cybersecurity tools. So you need something a little bit stronger um, and specified for this, this type of attack. Uh, the Bash Bunny as well is incredibly interesting. For about $100, it's a fully featured Linux computer in the palm of your hand. There's a little toggle switch on the side, um, and you can switch from that you know, storage drive that you trust, and with the flip of a button, it turns into that uh, Linux computer, which really the uh, the impacts are, are limitless. So these tools are all readily available online. They were created for pen testing, but uh, 
there are some some impacts that they can have and we need to be aware of them um, in order to keep our facilities safe and secure from from any of the negative impacts they may have. Um, so another example would be that it's not just you know USB devices. There's actually cables now that have been weaponized um, to cause electrical damage or to pull data. Some of them can provide a wireless access connection into site. Um, and you know the, the, the list goes on. So we need to be more aware of our supply chains, where we're getting these products uh, from. Is it a trusted name? Is it a trusted vendor? Are we testing these products? So this is what we need to think of now. Um, it's sad when you think about it, just a you know a simple storage drive or a cable to go about your day, but uh, we have to scrutinize everything a little bit more, and sometimes we need tools to do so. Um, at this time, most of uh, what I'll hear from from customers when I'm speaking to them is, "Oh, well, you know, that'll never happen. That's uh, it's more of a lab environment, and nobody really has these attacks um, in the real world." Well, you know, of course they they have to happen at some point. So late last year, there was actually a malicious actor that targeted a trusted employee um, who then knew they had access to the control network. They told them that uh, you know, here's a, a new box of uh, mice used in the facility. We're getting rid of the old ones, you know, go ahead and, and use this in your workday. So they brought it in, plugged it in, and uh, it actually provided access to a remote location. Someone else took control of the machines and launched a ransomware attack. Um, so these do happen. This is just one example, um, but there's been multiple in the last uh, number of weeks. And it's something we need to be aware of. We need to really scrutinize where we're buying our products from. Do we trust who that vendor is? And, um, you know, are, are we safe to use these in our in our own environments? I won't dive too deep into this slide here. There's a lot of information. Uh, but really, the takeaway that I'd like to, to raise for you all here today is that these attacks have been around for a long, long time, um, but they were really simple and, you know, fairly, fairly benign in their early days around 2005. And since then, um, they've gotten extremely advanced and we need something that can look um, past what a device physically appears to be and to analyze not only the software on the device, but the firmware itself um, and how that device is operating, what it's trying to do, and to ensure that we're uh, we're safe in, it, in, our, uh, in our operations day to day. So the key takeaways, um, it really doesn't matter what a device looks like or that you think it's safe. Everything is uh, in how the operating system treats this device and how it's recognized. If we think it's a USB drive and it performs as a USB drive, that's great. Um, but if we think it's a USB drive and it's really a secured wireless access point um, for some type of malicious actor, we need some type of tool to catch that and ensure that we, uh, we're safe in doing business as we need to. So a large part of my role um, as a global product marketing lead uh, for SMX is to speak to our customers. I need to hear about any feedback, how they're using USB devices, uh, what challenges they may have, what would allow them to do business in a better or more efficient way. Um, and to really collect some of this information in order to build the, the strongest product that we can. So with that, I also hear a lot of myths, right? Those uh, those users that think, oh, well, we're doing you know such and such, we're fine. Well, sadly, that's not always the case, and I, I'd like to just debunk some of these myths for you here today. The number one myth, um, and you know, it's starting to tail off a little bit more now that uh, USB security education is becoming more popular, uh, is around locked USB ports. The idea of, oh, well, we, you know, flip over this simple policy and we ensure that all USB ports are locked down. And this will prevent all USB malware um, and USB-based attacks. Well, sadly, that's just not true. As I mentioned earlier, um, there's a lot of advanced USB and human interface devices that can be easily purchased online or created um, by anybody that has any type of uh, hardware engineering abilities to create and circumvent these policies. Um, if it's a physical lock, everybody has a cell phone these days and they need to charge it. Uh, so they'll typically pry those out or pop them out with a pen. Or if it's a Windows policy, um, it's only really designed to prevent mass storage drives from mounting um, and interacting with that operating system. It's not designed to block keyboards or mice or any of these other USB devices that we need and trust. So what was once a decent uh, plan of uh, defense it really is no longer. The second most common would be, oh, well, I have antivirus on all of our workstations. We should be fine. It's great. Um, and I'm an advocate of using antivirus. I think everybody should if you can. Um, but as we know, there's a lot of outdated operating systems that 
you can't always load uh, antivirus onto, and AV is only as strong as its latest update. If you haven't been able to update that antivirus in a year, there are, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions or billions of new threats out there, um, and that out-of-date AV won't catch it. In addition to that, um, AV, it won't prevent all malware brought in from USB uh, media, and AV is also problematic in the sense that we have to mount this USB device on the workstation before it can be scanned, and sometimes it's just too late um, with some of these new modern attacks we see. The last myth that I hear, um, you know, as far as these most common top three would be around application whitelisting. Again, it's a great, uh, but there's no silver bullet when it comes to security. And typically there are different, um, you know, software packages that we need in order to do business. A really common example would be around Microsoft Office, whether that be Word or Excel. Um, we need these programs in order to do our day to day work. Uh, but it's really easy to hide a script or a, mac or a macro attack in these files that you need to, you know, enable all content when you go to open and edit this file. Um, and with that, you can launch potentially some, some malicious files in your whitelisted uh, software programs. So it's something we need to be aware of. We need to be sure that uh, our, our facilities are, are secure and that, um, you know, we're managing this, uh, this risk and this threat as best we can. So with that, um, I'll jump over to the product side. Uh, so this is our Honeywell SMX, and we've partnered with Thermokinetics to bring it to you here today. Uh, so we saw the need for this product as an industrial company ourselves, that there wasn't really anything available on the market um, to do half of what we needed it to. So we developed this product in-house, and it really is a complete USB security solution. Um, from that, um, we have the actual scanning gateway where you would mount any of your USB devices where we can check for different malware that may be uh, you know, brought in or is on these drives. We have an enforcement driver to ensure that everything that is brought to site has to be scanned or it will not be able to be read on any of the end workstations. Uh, we have a threat intelligence tool that is using some of the leading governmental industry uh, threat feeds as well as some really world-class threat intelligence as well as antivirus tools uh, really rolled into almost a defense uh, in-depth approach in a single solution uh, with the number of different layered uh, policies and programs that we have here. In addition to that, uh, we have the SMX Enterprise Threat Management Portal. Sadly, in our, our world today, we're dealing with some challenges that uh, result in a lot of us having to work from home if we can. With that, trying to pull data from the site can be more challenging to manage your logs, ensuring things are up and running. Um, and with the threat management portal, we we're able to do that. You're able to see all the systems that are online, any USB file activity, any times that a drives have been scanned or mounted within your, uh, within your environment, and you can track block files as well. Um, so it can give you that visibility really from anywhere that you are. And even though you aren't at site, uh, you can still access those logs and get some visibility that you need to do your job. Um, so the couple of things I'd like to note is that we do have a rugged solution. Um, it's been tested in almost every environment you can imagine. It's designed not to spark. Um, it has a shatterproof Gorilla Glass screen. You can keep safety equipment on, uh, such as any type of safety gloves, uh, when using the touch screen. And the other system is uh, a slimmer and more portable version. Uh, that's great for traveling or um, just to keep in your, in your laptop bag going to and from different sites. Um, so this is a patented uh, USB security solution. Um, and it really does provide uh, unparalleled value in the market. Just to walk through a really quick, uh, simple demonstration for you, the SMX system would be set up at the security desk or the entrance to a facility or inside the control room itself are typically the two main um, ways of install that I've seen. Whether it's a third-party contractor or an employee arriving to site, uh, they'll insert their USB drive, taking an inventory of that drive, We'll scan all files using our threat intelligence service and then verify and check in the device. This check-in um, process ensures that every USB drive that comes to site is scanned. Any drives that have not been checked in will not work within the site. Um, so we do this to enforce that all drives are scanned and that we know the files that are being brought to site. Um, we never look at your files. We never send them anywhere. We use a simple hashing technique um, to be able to verify whether or not a file is safe uh, without ever having to share any of your critical data. With that, uh, you can use that USB drive throughout the site on all of the protected computers. 
we check all logs and USB device activity and protect against all of those firmware-based attacks uh, with a patented driver that can look past uh, what a device appears to be and uh, look at how it's interacting with the operating system. Lastly, you know, it's the end of the day and uh, it's time to go home. You'll return to the SMX gateway, insert the drive and check out. We'll update our system logs and you're free to use that drive as you would um, outside the facility. So it's a really simple solution. Um, I like to think of it as cybersecurity for the non-cyber expert. It's something we can all do to be a little bit more safe and to have better visibility into our data and what's being done at uh, at our sites, even if we aren't there. So it's uh, it's really a great tool to have that full end-to-end -end visibility and uh, full enforcement of the policy across the, uh, the site. Just to do a quick walkthrough of the different components that I mentioned, uh, we have the two different SMX systems you can see in the top left, the more rugged system, um, and then the, the slimmer, more portable system with that pop-out kickstand uh, on the right. A little bit of detail on our guard threat engine. Uh, that is an OT, uh, it is really an OT threat engine. We use a lot of different IT tools and uh, ensure that we have the latest OT data as well. Any common patches have been whitelisted. You can manage your own custom whitelist or blacklist in this uh, threat engine. So if you have a certain type of system with a common patch, uh, you can allow that hash to be whitelisted and that can help uh, you know speed up any scan times going to and from your facilities. The patented driver, as I mentioned, at the bottom left, will show you what the USB device is when you mount it uh, and insert it to any of the workstations in your facility, allowing you to verify that you want that uh, type of device to be used. You can see a quick capture of the threat management portal with total files scanned, allowed files, and blocked files across your sites. From there, you can access the logging detail. And lastly is our guard uh, threat research team. So this is our follow the sun model uh, with our team constantly looking for the latest threats uh, that could impact any known OT systems as well as IT systems to ensure that you don't need to worry about uh, the latest threats. We, we can do that for you. Um, so that's really all that I had here today. I want to thank you all uh, for attending. And at this point, I can turn it back over to Adam. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Um, I think there was just, it looked like there was just a couple questions coming in. Um, I think originally when you were talking about some of the threats that existed, um, there was a question regarding whether the Triton targeted was targeted towards like a specific safety system or was it do you, do you brand safety systems it was targeting? Sure. So the Triton or Trisis malware, as it's uh, been named, it was designed to attack uh, Triconic systems. So it was a designed and specific targeted attack. Um, I'm not saying that the malware was targeted at the end user that we um, were able to help but it was designed to impact uh, these uh, Schneider safety systems. So it's uh, it's no malware that's out there today and we were able to catch it. So it really was uh, quite a relief for, for the, uh, the entire team involved. There's a lot of detail on these different threats that I listed, uh, not just Triton, uh, but Mirai, Stuxnet and, and others. So if you are interested, I'm happy to pass along any of that information. Um, but these are all the different things that our, our threat research team is looking at and uh, adding to the solution. Okay, and I think there was just one other question, um, uh, just for a little bit more clarification on what you meant by uh, defense in depth. Sure. Um, so in the world of cybersecurity, the idea of defense in depth is uh, a best practice. So the key is to not rely on a single concept to keep you secure, but rather to layer different approaches. Um, so as you can see here with SMX, we do have you know five key different groups that are looking for um, different potential threats and different areas. Um, and in our threat engine alone, we have multiple threat intelligence feeds, uh, different antivirus engines, different uh, threat intel engines, as well as some different tools that look at the behavior of files. There's different threat hunting we're doing. So it really is um, a multi-tiered solution uh, opposed to just a simple AV engine um, or, or really relying on one tool. So a best practice across cybersecurity and not just USBs would be to have a layered number of different tools that are looking for different threat vectors and each have their own, you know, advantages and disadvantages and to use as many of those um, in your environment as you can. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, 
Yeah, it doesn't look like we have any more questions at this time. So thank you all for joining me today. Thanks again, Matt, for um, leading the, the discussion. Um, if anybody has any questions, like I said, I will be distributing the recording of this webinar. Um, and happy to answer any questions. We can always set up uh, follow-up meetings uh, to discuss in more detail. So thanks again, Matt. Thanks to everybody else for joining us today. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Perfect. Thank you all. Have a good day.